great to be back. It's our seventh year in a row, and uh, today I'm particularly excited because I get a chance to share with you some uh, uh, exciting new technology from Transcend Medical, which is our next generation device. Um, and also, it's been a, a milestone year for Transcend Medical because we not only completed uh, a, a milestone study, one of the biggest studies in MIGS, but we also filed the PMA, which is the second only PMA uh, for a MIGS device. So we're very excited and a lot of work going on at the company. Um, I want to share briefly an overview for those that haven't seen the technology. Uh, the SciPass microstand is a superciliary microstand. Um, it goes into a very different place uh, than uh, other products. It goes into the supraciliary space, which is an ab internal location. It's implanted through a one and a half millimeter clear cornea incision. It's a supraciliary stent, so it can creates a conduit uh, for the aqueous to flow to the supracoroidal space. Again, this is a non perforating procedure, there is no bleb, no MMC. And as you can see here in the video, uh, it is a procedure that uh, can be done by both cataract surgeons and also glaucoma surgeons. It does uh, involve gonioscopy in most cases, although being uh, a supraciliary implant, that allows us to actually get to the space easier because we don't have to visualize the trabecular meshwork. Uh, the, the canal is, is definitely uh, something that requires gonio, but the supraciliary space does not, and we have also gonio-free procedure as well for the surgeon that prefers to use that. You can see here the stent was implanted uh, through the 1.5 millimeter clear cornea incision. Uh, in the case of cataract surgery, it can be implanted through the cataract incision, which is larger. It goes right above the iris uh, into the supraciliary space and creates that conduit for the aqueous to flow from the anterior chamber to the supracoroidal space. Again, why are we so excited at the company about supracoroidal outflow? There has been a lot of experience uh, and a lot of studies that have validated the therapeutic potential of the supracoroidal space. Uh, the supracoroidal space is unique because it has an oncotic sink, an oncotic gradient that absorbs fluid. And we've appreciated that in our both preclinical and clinical studies. Uh, in fact, in some cases, the evidence exists that there is almost a four millimeter of mercury gradient, which is great because that drives the aqueous flowing from the anterior chamber to the supracoroidal space without the need to actually create an opening in the sclera or elsewhere in the eye. And then the other part, which is very interesting that was appreciated more recently, that the supracoroidal space is one continuous sink, which has a high absorptive capacity. What that means is that if you penetrate the space from a single point, you're able to access the entire space. And we can see here a radio labeled uh, work that was done earlier uh, by another group showing that uh, injection into the supracoroidal space is able to give you a purchase on the entire real estate of the supracoroidal space. So this is what we do ab internal. We're creating a permanent conduit for aqueous uh, outflow and uh, we are creating a outflow to the supracoroidal space for sustained IOP lowering. Again, our program has grown over the years, and I think we presented here almost seven years ago. Um, we have now close to 3,000 cases worldwide. Uh, we've completed the largest MIG trial to date, uh, complete as early as uh, uh, Q1 of last year, uh, and we filed the PMA with the FDA for review uh, last October. It is a pretty substantial undertaking to develop a MIGS device, as all the companies know. Uh, we are almost a 10-year-old company in terms of developing uh, the space and developing the technology, starting with earlier work uh, from the Foresight Incubator uh, with the pilot studies all the way to the Compass uh, USID trial and the next generation technology. And what we've seen across all of our clinical trials is a very consistent IOP lowering uh, that is sustained. It is sustained all the way out to two years. Uh, and we can see that in combination with FACO surgery because this uh, procedure is aligned with the phaco surgical procedure and it's easy to do uh, without causing uh, any complications uh, of the cataract surgery. Uh, and we can see it as a standalone as well. In the US, we're pursuing the combined approach uh, with the FDA, uh, but in Europe, uh, the procedure is approved and has CE mark both as a standalone and combination with cataract surgery. We're seeing a consistent 30 to 35% IOP lowering 
Uh, of course, a little bit more with cataract surgery because cataract surgery by itself has an IOP lowering effect. Uh, and again, we've also seen on the safety side of MIGS-like safety profile. What that means is that really virtually no major uh, vision threatening complications. Uh, and this is something that really every MIGS device and MIGS procedure appreciates today, that if you are to be in the early to moderate treatment of glaucoma, you cannot have the complications of trabeculectomy. We're very excited uh, later on, probably early next year, to share the data from our Compass trial, which will really provide a lot more visibility and a lot more information as one of the biggest studies in MIGS space on both safety and efficacy of this procedure. And, ag and again, it is a significant undertaking, 505 patients uh, who had to go through two years of monitoring. Uh, again, for some of the pharmaceutical trials, we know the endpoints are three months uh, and follow up 12 months. I think for devices, uh, the bar is higher. We're looking at 24 month primary endpoints, which is significant because you have to show that you're better than cataract surgery at both 12 and 24 months by eliminating the confounding effect of uh, medications. So that's why Transcend undertook a very uh, uh, substantial trial which meets the guidelines of the FDA to eliminate any kind of bias that comes with the confounding of medications. And now I'm gonna step back a little bit and just tell you uh, the part that I'm most excited about which is the next generation technology from Transcend. Again, we understand Cypass is a treatment for mild to moderate glaucoma and we're very happy with, with that. But there are a lot more patients. There are patients that suffer from advanced glaucoma, refractory glaucoma, uh, in fact, new vascular glaucoma. And uh, I think uh, this is where the unmet need is greatest and everybody appreciates that. So Transcend undertook a project with uh, uh, the guidance of some of our advisors and ICOMET uh, to understand how can we expand the technology. And one thing we realized is that by expanding the supraciliary space, we can increase the efficacy and the IOP lowering. So we've introduced Cypass VX, which was an effort that started several years back, that allows us to inject viscoelastic behind the stent to expand the suprachoroidal space by a factor of 50, meaning being able to expand it significantly. Why? Because that creates an internal reservoir which is able to provide more absorption of uh, the aqueous and better IOP lowering. And that really allows us to introduce a next generation technology that not only addresses mild to moderate glaucoma, but really goes into the spectrum of moderate to severe glaucoma. And in fact, we have internal plans to address new vascular glaucoma. So ultimately, we want to take MIGS to the next frontier and, and be able to service the entire spectrum for uh, the glaucoma patient. And we've seen in early randomized clinical study, we've actually seen the better effect of Cypass VX which provides incremental benefit when we inject 30 microliters and 60 microliters of viscoelastic, which acts as a very nice spacer and expander and a better gateway to the suprachoroidal outflow. Again, what is the perfect mixed procedure? I think this would really remain to be judged by the patients and the physicians, uh, but we do believe that the absence of bleb, good safety profile, efficacy in mild, severe, and even moderate to severe spectrum as well as being gonio-free and being able to be used in conjunction with phaco surgery is really these are essential attributes for a successful mix procedure. Thank you very much.